one of the most important or the most important things when it comes to getting an amazing PI planning event, at least in my opinion, is getting the features absolutely spot on. In this video, that's exactly what we are going to be looking at. Ironically, for some reason, it's also the area where most or many agile release trains and product managers have challenges putting effective and awesome features together. So let's look at how we're going to do it in this video. Hey friends, I'm Ahmed, a skilled agile and productivity coach based in the UK. On this channel, we cover productivity, agility, and even joy. So in this sixth video in the PI Planning for Beginners series, where I walk you through step-by-step step everything that you need to know to run an amazing PI Planning event. And as I said, we're covering features in this video. So let's have a quick look at some of the fundamentals of putting together some effective features. So let's take a step back. So the product manager is the person that is responsible for defining what the agile release train should be focusing on. And the mechanism that they use to do that, the construct that they use to do that is what we call a feature. Now a feature is basically something that should be fairly short, snappy, outlines what the business need is, and also what the success criteria actually looks like as well. It also may have non-functional requirements and other elements on there as well. Now, the point is, is that it should fit onto something as simple as a card. So you've got your benefit statement over here on one side, and then on the back of it, you've got your acceptance criteria over there. Fantastic. So Ron Jeffries, way back when, came up with a very famous alliteration called card, conversation, confirmation. So they're the three C's, right? So your requirement, your agile requirement, in this case, we're talking about a feature, should be able to fit on a card. It, this is a pointer to a conversation. And then you need to have on the back of it a confirmation how do we know when we are actually done? So that's effectively what a feature actually is. Now we take these features and we put them into a list. So this is an ordered list, which is sometimes referred to as a backlog. Now at the team level, it could be referred to as a team backlog. And at the program level, it could also be referred to as a program backlog. Now what's important to know is, is that when we go into PI planning, we have an efficient and effective backlog, which gives us enough work for the release train to be working on. The other thing is these should be sized and they should be prioritized. Now in this video, what we are going to be focusing on, we're going to be focusing on how we put together some great features. And we're going to look at how simple it can be. And also we're going to look at discuss some of the pitfalls you need to be aware of as well. So let's have a look at the different types of features that you may have. So the first type that you may have is known as a product feature. So this outlines what, what functionality your service or your system or whatever it is you're building actually needs. The second type of feature is an enabler. This is something that enables the value to, to be released. So for example, as an enabler, you could have an architectural enabler, which is setting up the architecture upon which the system or your solution is going to actually work. You could have something to do with the infrastructure. So for example, if you're building the servers that you need, the development servers or the test servers or the automation regression packs that you have or your DevOps pipeline, all of these things, you could fall under the banner of the infrastructure. And then thirdly, you've got spikes and investigations where you may need to understand a specific domain a little bit better. You might need to do an investigation to learn and understand whether you, uh, whether you wish to uh, go down a certain path or whether you need to pivot and find an alternate route or approach to solving a specific problem. So we've got these two different types of, uh, of features. In fact, they could also be epics or stories as well. So let's have a look at the different types of agile requirements for a single train before we get stuck into the details of what a great feature actually looks like. 
So what you see on your screen over here is you're seeing a very simple table that I've put together to try and simplify and explain the differences between the different types of agile kind of requirement constructs that you could have for a single agile release train. So let's have a look at each one in turn. So uh, we've got at the top a program epic. Now remember these are scale agile requirements for a single agile release train. If you have a using the full safe where you've got multiple agile release trains and you've got a solution train then you will need additional constructs as well such as a portfolio epic and capabilities as well but since this is a beginner series I'm not covering those elements over here so for your single train you should be able to get away with quite well with an epic a feature and a story. So let's go through each of these one by one. So what is an epic? So this is a large cross-cutting initiative that gives ideally tangible benefit to the business and or to the end user. And the reason why I say ideally is because you've got epics that, as I said, some of them are going to be feature or uh, are going to be benefit oriented and others may be enabling that benefit as well. So let's have a look at how long the duration for a epic could last so the idea is, is that an epic could last you longer than a single program increment in fact it probably would otherwise it would be a feature if you look at the duration you see for program increment does it fit within an 8 to 12 week program increment we have got a no over there and if you look at the team iteration or the sprint duration we have got a no over there as well when we look at how, what is the scope of a, an epic, a program epic will fit within an agile release train, but it won't necessarily fit within a single team. It could do, but likely it probably would not. Okay, let's move on to features. Now the definition I like to use is a feature is a unit of releasable value and a feature must get done by a single agile release train within a single program increment. So when we look at whether it fits within a program increment, we say yes. Does it fit within a sprint? Unlikely no, right? And we've got different constructs for that as well. Does it fit within an agile release train? Absolutely, it must do. What about within a single team? Well, a feature could fit within a single team if it's a cross-functional team and it's able to deliver real value. And indeed, that would be the ideal, the optimal. The only gotcha I want to warn you of is, is that many times I see teams being formed uh, incorrectly and then features being also formed incorrectly so that a single feature can do it. So rather, we want to make sure that the feature delivers real value and the team is able to deliver upon that value not that we've got a team that it has got is able to only deliver a part of the value and so we split up the feature so that that doesn't have value either i hope that makes sense if not you can message me and i'll explain that a little bit more okay and then the third item over here is a story so the features are split into stories does it need to fit within a program increment? Absolutely. Does it fit within a sprint? Absolutely, it must do. And also, a story must be done by a single team. You can't split a story across multiple teams. That's how it differs from a feature. A feature could split across multiple different teams as well. Would you want it to fit within an agile release train? Absolutely. And also within a single team? Absolutely. So I hope this clarifies. In the link below, you'll see a, a link to this screen so you can download this uh, at your leisure and, and you can use it as you wish. Okay, so now just as a kind of a bit of a caveat, because this is a beginner series, I'm not covering the most complex version of features that I have covered in the past. So if you want a more comprehensive understanding of the different options that I practically use in real life, then you'll need to click on the video link that should be coming up over here if you're watching this on YouTube or in the description if you're watching this anywhere else. Okay, um, so that will give you a simple template and a complex template. But over here in this video, we'll only be covering the simple the standard safe feature template. 
Okay, so now let's have a look at what that looks like on your screen. You're going to see over here, you've got a couple of really basic, straightforward elements to our feature template. You've got the number. This, is, this could typically be a TFS, a Microsoft Teams, or a Jira number. And basically, that's a unique identifier for that. Then you've got the title, which is your short, snappy uh, business title. Please try and keep it short and snappy. Please don't put the feature benefit statement over there because if you imagine a full backlog and you've got full long statements that that's not that helpful, okay? So also please try and avoid technical information. What we are trying to focus on is the value we're trying to get. What is it we want? We're not really focusing that much on how we want to do it okay so that's just a tip for you to please bear in mind the next thing is a feature benefit statement sometimes it's also referred to as a hypothesis because we may not know for sure we are able to achieve that outcome and so we might need to do some investigation on that right we've got a hypothesis if we can achieve this thing if we can connect to this system if we can merge these two products together then we can achieve these outcomes we may not know for sure right so that's why it's frequently referred to as a hypothesis statement as well and then we've got a success criteria over here so one trick that i like to use is when you're filling this out ask yourself this question imagine you've now received this feature and somebody comes up to you and says hi look we've done this feature and it'll provide you with this feature right at that point what you want to ask yourself is what is the list of questions that i would ask for me to verify that that feature is actually done, okay? So one simple statement that I use is, we are done when we have this characteristic, this characteristic, this characteristic, and fill out the list of what is needed over there. And that's a quick and easy way I find to, to deal with that. Okay, in our last video, we looked at the Aussie case law system. We split that up into different features. Now, if you haven't looked at that and you want to know how we arrived over here, please click on the link above if you're on YouTube or in the description if you're watching this video anywhere else. Uh, but what we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at an example of an enabler and we're going to look at an, uh, an example of a functional feature as well. Okay, so what we have in red on the screen over here are what are known as your enablers, okay? If you remember, I said these are the architectural, the infrastructure, or your spikes. With spikes is another word for investigations, right? Your proof of concepts that you might need to have. And your functional features as well. Those are in the blue. So let's have a look at the enabler example first. Now, just the one thing. If you go to the Scaled Agile Framework and you actually look at the Scaled Agile Framework picture, what you will find is they it's color-coded. So they're using red for enablers and they'll use that throughout the the overall picture and they'll be using blue for functional requirements i just thought i'd mention that just so you know and we're using the same convention over here as well in this video okay so we've got a cloud infrastructure set up we're saying what is the feature type it's an enabler it's an architectural it's a slash infrastructure type and what's the benefit hype or hypothesis that we've got is we want to provide a necessary cloud infrastructure environment set up so that teams can build various systems and solutions and other things that they need to support our overall Justice Inc. Epic slash solution. Okay, and then underneath that, we've got our success criteria. We are done when the cloud product uh, based infrastructure provides all of these elements that we have and these we've listed underneath over here as an example if you look at point number two what we're saying is supports all functional requirements of the aussie case law epic except for non-functional requirements that may seem a little bit strange but what we want to do here is we want to get a version one up okay so we don't need to make sure that it has to be the full end case because we may not even know what that actually looks like so we want to get a small uh, version up but we want to also make sure that it's scalable so we want to have that there in the success criteria as well so afterwards once we understand the kind of load that we have the security requirements that we may have the number of concurrent users the performance requirements other things that we may have we can then scale up our infrastructure solution later on but this is everything we do in agile is kind of incremental right we want to build we want to understand we want to test we don't want to be wasteful 
Now, if you think about it, if we go and try and do it all in one, in one big, big, um, big bang kind of approach, then we may be quite wasteful because we're not exactly sure what are the actual demands that are actually required. So there may be what is called regret cost over there. So just bear that in mind as well. Okay, so that's an example of an enabler, right? Now, the next one, uh, what you see on screen over here is a feature which is more of a functional feature. And now over here, what we're saying is this is a, a feature that supports uh, divorce lawyers and it provides them with relevant case law and legal information. And uh, as in a similar way, it's got a success criteria. We are done when we can provide this type of relevant information, when this kind of data is available, when the, when the lawyers have this or legal practitioners have this kind of available information to them as well okay so there you have it i hope you found that useful we've gone through the different types of features both enablers and functional we looked at the need for uh, having good and great features we talked about the three c's from ron jeffries card conversation confirmation very important to remember this is not the entirety of all of the information that you may need. So if we go back to the enabler as an example, we may have supporting documentation underneath or behind this uh, feature to support what that actually looks like as well. And we may have that prior to going to the PI planning as well. So please bear that in mind. But these are pointers to that documentation and pointers to that conversation. At no point should we be trying to replace the conversations with documentation. But you need to try and find that sweet spot between how much documentation do you want to have? How much supportive conversations do you want to have as well? So I hope you found that useful. Very quick video in terms of features. If you want, again, as I said, if you want more, a more comprehensive, in-depth look at features, then please click on the video up over here or in the link in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video where we are going to look to see how we are going to size these features, which is very important for us to determine what's known as our delivery predictability. So till I see you next time, love learning, keep growing, and most importantly, don't forget to bring the joy. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.